Let's discuss about learning programming from books in this video. Now, this is an interesting topic because a lot of people reach out to me. What are your top two, three books to learn programming for or where should you learn this topic or that topic and so on? And this is an interesting topic because programming is one of those things which has evolved a lot and so has the resources to learn programming. In fact, anything at this point. So let's discuss about whether you should be using books even today or not. And if yes, which topics, if no, which topics not as well. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. Now I'm gonna share my own story of how I learned to program and where were books involved in that. So that hopefully would give you a better idea of if you should be using books or not. So I started early when I was in class seventh, eighth, I started learning programming from blogs and from videos and from all these places on internet. But of course, I discovered that people actually write books as well for learning to code. That was some point when I was in two, one, two years down the line when I discovered that books are actually a really good way of learning to code. So I downloaded a couple of ebooks. I never really purchased a book ever. Like I just downloaded a couple of ebooks and started reading through them. Now, one of the best things a book does is that usually the authors would go into great depth plus organize everything which they are learning or which they are teaching you, right? I have also written a couple of books and I know like when you're writing for a publisher, they actually expect you to follow a certain guide and certain, they have editors in the team. They have technical editors in the team. I have been a technical editor for a couple of books, so I know that as well. So what these companies follow is that they will give you a certain structure or a certain guidelines to follow and you have to be as an author comprehensive enough as well in the book. So this is like a great part because usually, I mean, you would never really see a great book being half published right or being half the content so when you purchase a book and you know it's recent and you know the you know the reputation of the book is good it is almost guaranteed that the book would most likely cover pretty much everything you need to learn depending on the level of the book right so if you're buying a book for core operating system concepts or you know you're buying a book for various other computer science related things or even programming languages or frameworks not sure like how many people have written a framework book like next year's or anything but when you buy these books they actually are guaranteed to contain a lot of useful information which includes a complete set of things which you need to know so i used to download these books ebooks and skim through them and a lot of times i would find a lot of great information just like any other video like i mentioned that Programming is something which you always learn by doing and not by reading or watching or anything like that. It's, it's a lot like sports, right? If you want to be a great basketball player or a great football player, there's only so much you can do or learn by reading or watching for that. Sure, you can read about practices, you can read about how to build your stamina so that you're good in the field and so on, but you have to be someone who's actually doing the sport or you know actively participating and failing and then doing it again, practicing, building that muscle memory and so on. So it's very much applicable when you're learning from books as well. The books will teach you only so much. They are great resource, especially Especially even better if they are covering some theoretical topics but for anything practical it's most often it comes down to how much you are using the stuff which you're learning from the books right now another thing which is important is that books are not for everyone and this is quite relevant in my context because when I started reading these books I realized that this is not probably the best way I learn because I need that practice element embedded right into my learning itself. So if I'm learning from a YouTube video, I need to quickly jump into my text editor and see what the output is or, you know, implement that feature which the author implemented and then tweak it a little bit. So that is that is what was really lacking in, in the books which I was downloading and reading. And even if I ordered them and got a hard copy, it will then have been even more difficult. So because then you have to switch from the real world to the computer screen and, you know, so on. So it is not for everyone if you are comfortable with uh, just watching a video or reading a blog and then implementing it that's also fine it's completely possible to learn programming without books it's just one resource it's just one place to learn that and finally one more thing which i don't like about books at all is that of course they are non-interactive you cannot do pretty much anything except for reading and it is very hard to update them if anything goes wrong and let's be honest i mean in a technical world things are changing rapidly all the time and if you have ordered a javascript book from 
2015 or 2016 chances are that most things which you read are, are not wrong as per se but they are not the best out of the production practices today it is much much easier to update an online course or an online resource compared to a printed book ebook whatever it is and you will most often find that these books age very quickly because especially in the world where these technologies are moving very fast like the web development world or you know even mobile application development world now so these things actually age very quickly in terms of the freshness of the resource so this is also one thing which you want to be very careful about is that if you are trying to learn javascript in today's time with a book which is printed anywhere before 2018 or 2017 chances are that you are missing on a ton of features which have been released up in the last 4 5 6 7 years which makes your code a lot more readable which makes your code a lot more beautiful and so on so you want to make sure that if you are trying to get at least one of these books which are based on a tech which is relatively new then the book should be relatively new as well but i do see the advantage of using books for older concept or you know the fundamental concepts which don't change over time for example understanding computer architecture or maybe assembly or some low level concepts or in general reading about the theoretical part of things so those things makes a lot of sense because these things are not changing over time and books like i said forces the author to condense a lot of good information in an organized and a structured manner which usually is not the case with random blog posts or you know just random videos which are 3 4 5 minutes. not long because you cannot give away a lot of condensed information i mean you can in a way but still you need to build that momentum that rhythm in the complete book the chapters the flow the sections the headings and so on so usually it's a good idea to consider going for a book if you are looking to learn about the more deeper or the more basic concepts but anything except for that which is anything which is modern or which is relevant in recent times you should probably opt in for a interactive course if possible on codebam or you know just a regular course regular boring video based course so and this is this is one of the interesting things about programming as well even codebam as a platform now has a possibility to exist because of the advancements made in the browser space and in the whole web dev ecosystem earlier it was only possible if you go 10 15 years back it was only possible and feasible to buy books and read from them and learn coding yourself but now with the advancement in technologies it has unlocked the opportunity of not just video based courses which is also available for like a decade now but the ability to have interactive courses to learn programming the thing which i mentioned earlier that i always try to read the book and try to implement it that's exactly what we do at codebam in terms of when you're taking up an interactive course you have a video on the side like the tailwind this new tailwind course which we did had a video embedded right inside the practice interface right so this is like a best way of learning to program in my opinion where you just learn in front of you and minimize the video keep on practicing learn again keep on practicing and so on so yep hopefully this video helps you make a clarification on when you should go for books when you should not go for books and stick to online resources that is all for this video make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel let me know in the comments below which thing which you would want me to discuss in a open discussion like this in the next episode and we can take it up from there that's all for this one and i'm going to see you in the next video really soon if you're still watching this video make sure you comment down in the comment section i watched this video till the end also if you're not part of code dumps discord community you are missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code you already know the drill make sure you like the video subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and thank you so much for watching